Hi there friends, welcome back to another video. I'm pretty excited about the topic today because it seems pretty much in the news, uh, everything about OpenAI. Um, and I was a little bit scared, to be honest with you, seeing the news because um, I gained so much productivity in leveraging uh, technologies like ChatGPT in my day-to-day -day work. And so I thought, given this topic is so much, uh, let's say, in the news at the moment of everything going on at OpenAI, it might be a good chance to kind of talk about how generative AI and how that technology, despite whatever may end up going on um, at that company, um, is something that's really transformed the way that I work. Um, so let's jump straight into it. All right, so to get started, I've actually generated this uh, PowerPoint presentation using Copilot. So already there, we've got generative AI. Um, and my prompt was pretty simple, which was how um, using generative AI helps in my productivity. Um, and so there's two primary ways that we're going to talk about today. Uh, the first of those is going to be related to how things like ChatGPT helps me with ideation. Um, and so I'm going to paint a couple of examples of scenarios that I would uh, be doing in my day-to-day -day job as a program manager at Microsoft. Um, and then I'll talk to you about how I use ChatGPT and we'll use some examples as well. All right, so the first example I'm going to talk to you about is uh, to give kind of a scenario on how I'd use ChatGPT. Um, is that uh, this is one similar to something in our team that happened back in July, um, is that we had a new team join our team inside of Microsoft um, and they needed a new platform to build upon because the work that they were doing historically had been on a platform that wasn't, let's say, managed or owned by our team. Um, and so there was an ask to go and do, um, let's say, an assessment, first of all, about how they're working. Um, so I immediately to try and structure the way that I approach something, I like to, let's say, get a, a perspective on how I should approach that. I've got, let's say, my own experience and my own thoughts on how I'd normally follow that, but I like to jump into ChatGPT and get some inspiration as well. All right, so you're probably familiar. We're, here we are inside of ChatGPT, um, and let me just write up a little prompt uh, so we can take a look. All right, so I've just put a prompt in there, which is like, I've just been assigned a project at work where a new team's joined. We need to develop a new platform for this group to work on. I've been asked to complete a process assessment. What are some of the steps I should follow? Um, noting that I'm a program manager in Microsoft, um, provide a high level response. We can dig into details of each step later. All right, so you can see it's given back uh, 14 steps um, in terms of that should be considered in the program uh, stages. Um, and for me, having that is good and all, but let's say you want to add an additional, let's say, context about your working situation. In my case, you know, we have existing program management um, processes inside of Microsoft that we follow, uh, especially for things like this. Um, and um, I'm going to use one example of that, which would be using the ProSci uh, methodology. Um, so I'm going to give an additional prompt back to ChatGPT to help iterate on the response and help incorporate that in as well. All right, so I've just given an additional prompt, which is uh, you, we use ProSci. Uh, can you help the, to group and align the steps outlined within the methodology? All right, this is brilliant. So now I've got the... Um, methodology that it outlined for the project aligned to the five ADCAR uh, process within the ProSci methodology, which is awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. We can now, let's say, um, adjust this because let's say now I've kind of iteratively um, formed this uh, approach um, and I would now like to present it within a document without all this explanation of the points. So I can say, please help me formulate this in something I can put in a document without sufficient details about the headings. So I've just wrote in, um, can you provide the headings for each section so I can formulate this into a template for managing the project moving forward? All right, so I'm going to take that, bring it over to Word, enter the template, put it in as text, quickly do some formatting. All right, I've now got the outline and um, this is all good and well and I have now a format to go and uh, complete this process assessment aligned to the ProSci methodology but often you can be like well I need to get started now I've I've scheduled the call with the with the team um, and I want to start defining that project scope and objectives let's go back to ChatGPT and formulate a draft project scope and objectives so that we can use that to already kind of think about what our output is going to look like from that stage of the uh, project. 
So a slightly longer um, prompt because I got some in ideas as I was writing that out. But it's I'd like your help to formulate a draft project scope and objectives. In addition, um, I'd like some interview questions to tease out the scope and objectives based on interviewing the team who's joined. All right, we've got quite a lot there. Um, let's take some of it across to the document to take a look. All right, so we can see already that we have kind of an outline scope and objectives without actually having done any of the work yet. Um, but this is obviously giving us a foundation of like an example of what the content would look like so that as we're shaping and having those conversations in those interviews, um, we're able to start thinking about, you know, what that's going to look like. Um, in addition, I'm going to um, add an appendix se section here um, and I'm going to bring over those interview questions as well. All right, we've got those interview questions nicely captured and now I'm obviously ready to go and uh, have those conversations with the end users. Um, to be able to help formulate the first step in the project. So I would say this is kind of how I'd like to prepare for my meetings, how I like to prepare for um, having those conversations. I'll be in various, let's say, stages of, um, you know, discovery in terms of what I'm doing. But I'm obviously all the time working with almost like with Microsoft, of course, calls it a co-pilot. But, you know, it, it really is my co-pilot. It's the, someone there who I can obviously have those conversations with, um, talk iteratively with, uh, think about how to shape uh, my proposal um, and I would say one of the biggest advantages of course as well is that the history of your conversation is contained within um, that conversation as well um, and then you're able to continue to keep iteratively working. So um, I would definitely, if you're not already using ChatGPT in this way, I would definitely recommend using it. Um, one note of caution, of course, is always make sure uh, when you're copying and using ChatGPT in particular uh, that you're not using any um, private data from within your uh, company um, because, of course, that's something that you shouldn't do. Um, and uh, we want to, if you are going to be using or would be looking to use a tool which would work uh, in a similar way, uh, something like Copilot for Bing Enterprise uh, would probably be a better option. Um, because again, that's going to keep it within your um, system. For me at the moment, um, personally, I use ChatGPT for the speed because uh, as you could see, we've been able to really quickly get to the um, to those points. Um, and I like to be able to keep the history as well and be able to refer back to all of that as well. All right, so the second way I want to talk about how my productivity is multiplied by probably 10 <laughs> in this particular case is using ChatGPT with documentation. Um, and for those of you who work in engineering teams or uh, have worked in engineering, um, you know that probably documentation is one of the bane of life uh, for many of engineering teams because it's you want to be working kind of where the, let's say, where the iron is hot um, because that's really where the technology is being driven. But then you have to obviously make sure that you provide a good representation of the work you are doing. Um, and for me, that's where something like ChatGPT can really accelerate and speed up uh, that. Um, and I have, I think, a couple of methods that I want to show you, uh, especially with the new features of ChatGPT that I think are really going to uh, blow you away um, and get you using it tomorrow for your documentation as well. Uh, so let's take a look at those. All right, so I'm going to follow on from uh, where we were before with the uh, project example that we use this as a scenario. Um, and let's say I'm further on now in the project and I've been able to kind of start to formulate the data model um, and I've been building that data model inside of Dataverse. Um, and what I want to be able to do is to capture and document all of the custom uh, columns that I've created. Um, so in this case, for those of you familiar uh, with Dataverse, um, you can see that I've just applied a filter on the name uh, over here. Um, and then I have all of the different uh, types named columns. I have the um, ISC PMO, that's the name of my team in Microsoft, and then the name of the column, um, the data type, whether it's managed, customizable, required, or searchable. Um, we do all of our documentation in Markdown, so I'm going to want to have it in Markdown um, so that I can push it to my repo um, as well. Um, so this is going to be the feature I'm going to show you. I hope this one blows you away because when I figured it out, I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> and it saved me so much time um, because one quick thing to show you, if I try and copy the screen here, uh, if I drag over these, I can't actually copy the information on my screen. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a print screen um, and then I'm going to uh, snip around the columns. So uh, I don't think you'll be able to see me doing this in, in real time. But what I'm doing is taking a snapshot um, of the data model um, and I've taken that snapshot now and I'm going to go over to ChatGPT 
And then using the existing conversation I've had, I'm going to give it the following prompt. All right, so I've just given it a prompt, which is like help uh, translate the attached image to a markdown code. Um, and then I'm attaching the print screen. So you can see I've taken a snip. Um, I'm then using um, Windows Shift S. Uh, I always use that one. It's the one I'm most familiar with. Um, and then I've pasted it inside of here and I've said I want it to be a markdown code. So let's hit enter. All right, so it seems like uh, today in particular, with it being the weekend, that ChatGPT has some challenges, but um, it's given back an example anyway of some of the text that it's been able to uh, transcribe and take from the optical character recognition to be able to return a part of it to me. Um, I will also mention like, um, you know, making tables in Markdown is one of my least favorite things to do. So the fact that you can already get far with this is good. And I've not had that say any issues when I've um, accessed it at other times. Um, but we're going to take this across, bring it to my IDE, uh, paste it in here. Um, and we can quickly have a look at how it would be presented. Um, so the table's looking pretty good. It's a good representation of what we've got. Um, I'm then going to, um, just to make it even more nice, I'm going to uh, open up GitHub Copilot chat. Um, and I want to take the table. I'm going to do a slash command on that uh, by pressing Control I. Um, add documentation for that. So it's given some uh, documentation about the table um, so that I have it there um, and then I can have that uh, presented above and I'm just going to comment out the uh, information as well. Yeah, I'd forgotten how to comment out Markdown. I'd missed the explanation marks, so we're just going to put that in there as well. Um, and then we've got until the section here. So anyway, that documentation is there inside the file in, and it's commented out, but it's there to represent uh, what the table is about. Um, so you've been able to see how quickly I've been able to go from, you know, this table to having it inside my documentation, um, which is super quick. And then also using ChatGPT for its vision capabilities and then Copilot for its code based uh, capabilities. So the other way of uh, using ChatGPT I would like to show you is, uh, let's say, taking this architecture, this very simple architecture here of a system that we're currently developing. Um, and basically seeing if it can explain it uh, and then we can use that in our documentation as well. So let's give this a go. Okay, so pretty amazing um, in terms of what it was able to explain. That was something I hadn't done or prepared for in advance of this video. So it's amazing what it can return. Um, but what you can basically see is it says uh, this is an architecture for a computer aided design system. Uh, that's not what it stands for, but we'll let it go. Uh, and it represents the requester, um, an individual who's responsible for initiating requests, uh, the submission tool, an application where the requester submits a CAD file. It doesn't recognize the Power Apps um, logo. Um, the um, tool is an entry point. The CAD data manager, part of a di diagram is a Dynamics 365 logo. Um, I'm not, I don't see that. Um, and then the group is probably responsible for creating, reviewing, or managing the designs, um, the CAD reporting, the management as well. And then the flow indicated with the arrows show the different components selecting the direction of data um, and talks about requests submitting something. CAD submission tool sends data to the CAD data manager. Um, the CAD data manager seems a central hub, interacts with both the team and the reporting. Um, and the reporting sends reports to management for review. So this is really accurate. Um, and just to add a bit of cherry to the cake. Um, so I've asked it to put it in documentation format, explaining it to someone reading documentation in markdown format. All right, so it's uh, given me quite some text. Let's bring this over to our documentation. Um, let's make a new page. Let's put in the text. Let's take a preview. So we can see an overview here. We're going to put in the picture as well. Okay, we've put everything in there now and we've got our first draft of the documentation. Of course, this isn't all correct and would need uh, updating. 
but the ability to get to something from nothing <laughs> in such a short period of time just using images in this particular example is for me incredible uh, and it's just such a time saver um, so the last thing I want to show you in relation to documentation is something we do let's say to represent data flows so I'm going to come back into ChatGPT and say so in this case I'm asking it to imagine an ER diagram in mermaid format which I can use to show the data flows from the system above okay so it creates a very quick mermaid uh, diagram I can just put in here I can add that in put in the correct Oops. so it uh, presents it and now we can see we also have a great mermaid diagram uh, to represent the uh, relationship between the data in the system so uh, pretty incredible all right so what we covered into video today was all around how to use chat gpt to help improve productivity and I showed you two primary examples of how I use it in my day to day, one of which is really in kind of ideation, brainstorming, how to improve the process of how I start a project and how I can engage with my stakeholders um, and get really the, the, the ball rolling um, and making sure that things are really well thought through and that I'm showing up prepared and having thought through something. Um, that speed to iterate and to get to that uh, point can be so much more uh, improved by using something like ChatGPT. Uh, and then the second example is something which again can be a frustrating part of a job for many people which is um, especially in engineering teams is kind of documenting the outcomes of the work that you do. Um, and I've seen quite some ways of kind of let's say speeding that process up um, and being able to kind of create the um, I'm going to call it the breadcrumbs of the work that you've done to kind of help someone else follow um, and keep up to date with what you've done. So I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, leave a comment and like a like down below. Don't forget to keep paying it forward and look forward to seeing you in a video next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.